Hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm going to give you a short introduction to Squall. Now, Squall is a set of tools for After Effects that allows you to export vector animations from After Effects to code for iOS. It consists of three things. First, there is the extension for After Effects. This extracts the animation data from your composition and writes it out to a file. Then, there's the companion app for iOS. With that, you can connect to the extension and preview animations live on your device. And lastly, there's an iOS SDK. This allows you to run any of these animations in your own app. Now, let's go in and have a look. If you haven't already done so, go to Window, Extensions, and Open Squall. And there it is. To connect the extension to our iOS device, we can use the companion app or our own app running the Squall SDK. This here to the right is the companion app. Make sure that your computer and your device are on the same Wi-Fi network. Now, enter the device's address into the device field, and if the indicator to the right shows up as blue, the connection is established. We already have an animation set up, so all we have to do now is hit render, and boom, it's on our phone. We can scrub around, change the color, hit render again, and it updates instantly. Now, Squall supports quite a large number of things in After Effects. Things like masking, things like text animators, and of course, gradients. But sometimes, you still might run into situations where the output does not quite match the input. Here, for example, we've added a mask, set the masking mode to add, and updated our file. And while the preview comes out fine for additive mode, once we set the mask to subtract, the app does not update correctly, because subtractive masks are not supported in Squall. If you ever feel like the output is not correct, you can hit Analyze, and then Squall will open the log in your browser and list any conversion problems it might have encountered. Now, it won't find everything, but it's a good place to start. In our example, it found a problem in shape layer 1 of the composition called Gradients. And as expected, our masking mode is incorrect. So, once we set it back to add, hit analyze again, it doesn't complain anymore, and our composition should be good to go. And now, to output any of these animations to a file, simply hit the browse button and select the location. Whenever you now press render, Squall will also write out a JSON file. You can take this file, pass it onto the Squall SDK, and render the animations in your own app. Sometimes, if you're a developer, you don't want to go through an extra file, and you don't want to have to deal with an extra SDK, an extra dependency, none of that. So, you have your composition, you have your logo, and you're making some changes. And now, you just want that, what you're seeing, in code. That's where the clipboard comes in. You can choose from Swift or Objective-C, click the camera icon, and you get a static code snapshot of your current composition. You just need to copy it, paste it into your project, and run. And there it is. Now, for complex compositions, it's still better to render to a file. But for shape layers and simple setups, the snapshot tool is the quickest way. And of course, it also works for animation. You have your animation set up, select the animated property, click clip, and you get your code. And this, of course, also works with Objective-C. And again, if you want to go beyond single select animated properties, you have to render to a file. Squall also supports expressions. Here, we have the time assigned to a text layer. We hit render and see the expected result. Now, the way that this works is that Squall asks After Effects for each frame what the value of that property is. And it will then write that value to the file. And while this is a performant approach, it's also non-interactive and adds quite some blow to the file size. And for that reason, Squall also supports dynamic expressions. As the name suggests, dynamic expressions are not evaluated frame by frame in After Effects, but rather in real time on your device. We'll go to Settings and turn on Dynamic Expressions. We'll click Render, and not a lot is happening. So, we'll add a touch input control. Squall will add a null to your composition and attach an expression control to it. All we have to do now is pick whip our shape layer's position to that expression control, hit render, and now we have an interactive animation that responds to our touch.
You can also add the device's screen size, accelerometer, or gyroscope data as input to your composition. But it is important to say that, out of the box, these tools work only for the Squall Companion app. You can, of course, define the same tools and many more for your own app. Check out the website to see how that works. Let's turn to settings. In the render settings, you can influence how Squall renders a composition. By default, hidden properties and values will be skipped. It can, however, be useful to have them included in the file regardless. For example, if a visible layer has an invisible parent, or also if you're using dynamic expressions and you're referencing either a hidden layer and or hidden property. But be aware that any of the changes that you make under render settings will also change what is written to the output file. When you pair the extension to the companion app, you can force Squall to preview animations as core animations. This comes with certain benefits and trade-offs. Core animations, for example, do not support dynamic expressions. If you want to know more about any of the settings, click the question mark to the side and it will open the relevant section on the website. And lastly, if you want the Squall After Effects extension to update itself, you have that option here as well. Either way, to find new updates, you can always go to the website or to the About page here in the extension and check for yourself manually. But of course, you may still have to update the companion app and or SDK to take advantage of new features and fixes. And that was a short overview of Squall for iOS and After Effects. A trial version, tutorials, code examples and more can be found on the website on squall.no.